Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalra and recently I was able to do the event to unlock the Magha Oryx. And while streaming, I got a lot of you guys asking me questions on how to unlock the Magha Oryx and the Dark Iron Dwarves. And if it's possible to unlock him on a Horde character and unlock everything else on the other. So I decided I'm going to put a video together on everything you need to know for unlocking the brand new allied races of the Makar Uncorrupted Orcs of Draenor and the Dark Iron Dwarves of the Alliance. Let's first take a look at exactly what you need to do in order to unlock this new allied races. First, you have to complete the war campaign. The war campaign opens up more quests until you reach Revered with the Honor Bound or the 7th Legion. Once you finish the final quest, the war campaign is over. The only other thing you need to do is grind out the reputation for the Honor Bound or the 7th Legion to Exalted. Once you are Exalted, you get to go back to Stormwind or Argomar, do a short quest for the new allied races, and then you'll be able to unlock them and play as them. Now, a question I got a lot during the livestream was, if you're somebody who unlocked the reputation for the honor bound, does that mean you unlock both of the allied races? You just need to have a 120 character just to finish up the story. No, it doesn't look like that's true. It seems that if you want to unlock an allied race, that means you have to have a 120 character on Kulturas or Zandalar and grind out two separate reps on two separate factions, which does sound inconvenient. A lot of people express their thoughts about grinding reputation, even though that this is an MMORPG and grinding is usually part of the content. Blizzard did state that if you decide to race change your character and you decide to go to the other faction, let's say you're a Horde main and you grind up the reputation to honor bound to about revered and you decide to do a race change to the other faction, you will have the seventh legion also at about revered. So the reputation does transfer over. Which makes me wonder if it's possible to take a main character after he got the unlocks for, let's say, Maka Oryx to transfer them over to the Alliance, he do the story, unlock the Dark Iron Dwarfs, and then transfer back. But as it is right now, you have to have a character of Horde or Alliance, grind out the necessary rep, and do the main story, which is not that difficult to do. The rep grinding, however, can take a while. Technically, you will eventually get exalted with a rep just from doing world quests in the area. Chances are you'll get a decent chunk of emissary quests where you have to do four world quests for a faction in order to get a good chunk of reputation. But if you're someone who is trying to figure out faster methods to increase the rep for the seventh legion or the honor bound, I have a few ideas. First of all, completing your islands for the week. Not only does it reward you with a good chunk of AP, but also about a thousand five hundred rep towards the seventh legion or the honor bound. This can be done on normal and heroic and a generally easy, but if you want to spice it up, grab yourself a good players and do a couple PvP versions of islands. It's fairly quick events, generally rewards you a decent amount of AP, and it is difficult to lose, if, especially if you're doing them on normal or heroic. Another suggestion I have for you guys is check out the Darkman Fair whenever it's available. Riding the Carousel gives you a 10% EXP buff as well as a rep buff. Also from the Darkmoon Fair, if you have enough tickets from playing some of their games, you can get yourself a Darkmoon hat, which will also give you a little bit extra EXP. So if you decide that you're going to do all the world quests of the opposite faction for about an hour, you can wear the hat to get a little bit extra reputation. Lastly, it's a good idea to check your command table. I know a lot of us didn't really enjoy them back in WAD, maybe even Legion, but you should check them from time to time. There's a good chance that you might have a command table task that either words you AP or reputation. With how simplified the command tables are, there's not a lot to it. There's no really math and you really shouldn't need an add-on for it, although you can use one. And it's fairly easy to take the command table tasks that you might enjoy, like the ones that get you a lot more rep, and try to get them to 200% completion rather than 100. Lastly, I just want to comment a bit about the grinding for the rep and these allied races. I feel like because of the different experiences as Horde versus Alliance, the different storylines, I think it is worth having a character on Alliance or in Horde in Battle for Azeroth. The different quests, the type of experiences, and overall the different narratives that you will see is actually unique. So at least it doesn't feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over. 
Plus, if I do decide to play some of the classes that I'm interested in, like Mage, for example, I am going to level my Mage as Alliance. This will give me a little bit of a different perspective whenever I feel like playing a range class or a caster class. And if at any point Mages have an update, I'll be there to check them out off the bat. Plus, the Mage will allow me to experience the zones that I'm currently experiencing right now in Drostvar, and I'm still there to do Stormsong Valley and Tyriard Sound as well as the main campaign for the Alliance. I'm actually interested in more aspects than just dungeon grinds and PvP, so I do want to see how the story of Battle for Azeroth turns out. So I'm going to use this mindset to help me do the grind and get myself to Exalted with the 7th Legion, so I can unlock Dark Iron Dwarves and hopefully level 1 fairly quickly, especially by the end of the expansion. I personally don't mind having to work for allied races. While they're not really new, they do offer new ways to play the same classes we've already had. Being able to play a rogue as a void elf or a rogue as a blood elf is going to be a slightly different experience, which I'll find exciting. And it's kind of cool to have something to work towards. We already have all the normal vanilla races that we can play. They're just fine and suitable for the gameplay. And none of the new allied races feel like a, uh, a buy to win type of deal. So I have no problem grinding for them. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of an idea how I approach it and hopefully with this mindset you guys might be able to apply it for yourselves in hopes that this grind doesn't become too tedious for you. Anyway, good luck everybody in grinding out the rep as well as the story. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts about the allied races. Should Blizzard take away all rep requirements or just make you, let's say, grind honor bound on Horde and then be able to unlock the alliance ones at the same time? Also, what are your thoughts on them still having reputations requirements for the older Legion allied races like Lightforge Jonai, Void Elves, and others? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. Leave your comments down below, and I'll see all of you guys in another video.